I've been on a hiatus. I recently left the internet for a month and I thought to myself, hmm, maybe leaving the internet for a month, maybe things would improve. Maybe not having my presence on this platform will make things get better. And maybe, just maybe, Gabby Hanna will stop just doing things. And the only thing that's changed is that I don't have lighting anymore. I do. I think I've just watched Bo Burnham's special uh, one too many times. Look, one second. Wow. Really wasn't that impressive, was it? Hello everybody, welcome my beautiful dumplings, my wonderful beans. It's not changed, as I just said. It's 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 gotten worse, and I've bought some lights. Basically, I'm very depressed. But a lot of things have happened in the last month. What is that, you ask? Well, let me explain. You see, for the last 400 years, there has been an ancient war ongoing, an ancient crusade, which, surprisingly enough, was actually not started by the United States of America. No, it was uh, started by Gabby Hanna. I would like to dub this as the Gabby Hanna Crusade. And in this crusade, the militant force that is Gabby Hanna has been basically taking on every single person that she has ever met in her entire life. And I'm not exaggerating here, literally every single person that you possibly know is most likely at war with Gabby Hanna. Your grandmother, she's probably made a few tweets about Gabby. Your dead cat, well you don't even want to speak about some of the things they've been tweeting. Disgusting. Jesse, what the f*** are you talking about? And yeah, that war has recently continued because just like everybody else on the internet, Gabby Hanna suffers from a certain issue. And the issue being that she just, she just can't stop talking. She, she just can't... Do that. And it's not a Gabby Hanna thing. This is an everybody thing. Everybody internet just once in a while needs to realize, hey, maybe I shouldn't put my input on this thing. Maybe nobody cares. Or maybe people do care. And the thing that I'm going to say is only gonna make it worse. A little bit of advice for everybody. Um, you you sometimes just 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 don't need to say things. But naturally so, we are all terminally online and Jeff Bezos and the social media gods have grips on our brains and we will never be freed from this... from this prison. Never. Ever. Which inevitably has resulted in a... A series from Gabby Hanna, a, 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 a series, an expose series where Gabby basically responds to every single person in her past, including Trisha Paytas, including T-Channels, including, I, I don't know, your nan, your, your uncle, everybody. As I said earlier, this war involves you, me, your dead dog from seven years ago who you still haven't quite got over yet, everybody. In this series, Gabby was very angry. And to be honest with you, when I first saw this series, I was a bit confused by the marketing and presentation of what this series was actually going to be. When I saw it, Gabby was kind of posting about it like it was the first time she's ever responded to absolutely everything. It's, it's Gabby finally fighting back. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like she's done multiple responses. It's not like she's uh, done an interview on drama or, that, or made multiple response videos in the past or done a podcast about drama or done podcasts with Trisha Paytas or made loads of tweets or just get mad at me in general. It's not like she's done that. Look, I'm not saying that Gabby Hanna can't respond to anything. I, I'm not saying that Gabby Hanna doesn't have the right to defend herself. I'm not saying Gabby Hanna doesn't have the right to freedom of speech, but maybe some people should just stop talking. But she does have the right to defend herself. I was just a little bit confused by the fact that anybody thought this was going to be something new, something amazing, some specific things were going to be put out there because Gabby has posted receipts in the past. She has made loads of responses, as I just showed you. I was not shocked that this series was a complete and utter disaster. I think Gabby saw this thing that she was making and thought that it would most likely be something better than it actually was. But in my opinion, 
it was always destined to be a complete and utter failure. And yes, this series most definitely failed. She's turned off the likes and dislikes on pretty much every single video in this series. I believe she's turned off the comments in almost every video in this series. She's been ratioed multiple times. She's got multiple response videos from people that have basically never been involved in drama from my personal knowledge or just haven't for the last 20 years on YouTube. Just. It's mental how many people have actually come out and responded to this thing and basically just said, no, this this is just stupid. W what is this? Why? Stop. Please. And I guess the main question is, uh, what is the damage of this series? How has this series truly affected Gabby Hanna? Because she has portrayed this series to be some form of art piece, which... I beg to differ. I, I, I truly do. I, I don't typically see art in YouTube drama and that is coming from somebody that talks about YouTube drama. So the, the, the result of this art piece was um, minus 176,000 followers on all platforms. Yes, I calculated that. What do you think I've been doing for a month and a half? So yeah, I think I was right in saying that this series was a complete and utter failure. But the next question is, am I really going to sit through this entire series and review every single word that Gabby Hanna said word for word? No. No, <laughs> I'm not. I surprisingly have things to do. I have a lot... Okay, we all know that was a lie. I, I just really don't really want to go through everything in this series word for word. There are some videos in this series which I'm not going to cover for obvious reasons. I really don't want to bring those topics up again because I feel like they should remain where they're currently at. But also, I do just mainly want to take a look in terms of in-depth analysis at the videos Gabby has made in context to my previous videos. Now don't get me wrong, I am still going to give a conclusive review of this series, but allow me to explain to you what we're going to go through in this video. Number one, the most important one, obviously, the Jesse smile situation, Gabby's response, and Jesse's response. I made a video about this previously, and I think it's only right I give an update to this and go through both responses. And number two, Gabby's response to T channels, not an overall analysis of it, but just in general why I think it's a little bit stupid. And number three, a conclusive review of the series and the overall response to it. So sit back folks and uh, enjoy the ride because I believe this is going to be a very long video and this was an even longer intro than I've ever done before. So yes, I feel like as I said earlier, we should start off with the Jesse smile situation and now this video is going to take a more uh, monotone tone from here towards, I don't know, around halfway through because I'm obviously going to be covering some very serious topics and I don't want to make jokes every single second of the video so yeah I do just want to put a trigger warning and say that I am now after this moment going to be talking about some very uh, upsetting and triggering themes such as rape and such as mental abuse so I would advise skipping ahead to the chapters of this video where I will not be speaking about this topic and I have given timestamps below so you can get around this sensitive issue and after the timestamp which I put in which you can now click to I will use different wordings and avoid saying specific words just so the people that want to actually watch this video do not get triggered. So yeah, the Jesse smile situation. I understand most of you will probably know what this is and what has happened and will probably be on my side in this one and, and Jesse smiles' side, obviously. But for those who don't really have an idea of what this is, allow me to give a very, very brief explanation. So in the last few years, it's been heavily debated over where Gabby Hanna remained friends with a disgusting human being known as Curtis Lepore. Now, I'm not going to give you the context or who or what this person did in terms of career. They are just an absolutely terrible person. But the context I will give you is that Gabby was friends with Jesse Smiles, not apparently in the time of the situation, but afterwards where certain things happened, which I'll go on to explain previously. But it gets extremely dark, so I am going to give a warning again. I, I know this this isn't going to sound professional because it, it is very triggering for me to even say like these words, but 
Curtis uh, raped Jesse Smiles, um, and obviously, so many people came out against him. So many people supported Jesse, especially in the last couple of years. But it's been alleged that Gabby actually, in the past, remained friends with Curtis for a while and even made tweets mocking the situation after Jesse bravely came out about it and went to the police about Curtis Lepore. Now, this is a heavily debated subject and I covered it in my last video. There is a lot of evidence out there to suggest that Gabby remained friends of him or actually spoke to him. Gabby has since admitted to seeing him at parties, uh, taking photos with him, which she has now debunked, apparently, which we will also further go into, and I went into in my last video. And also there is a FaceTime call which happened between Gabby and Jesse of where Gabby heard out her friends, well, ex-friends, rapist. No pictures, there's no tweets, there's no proof of any kind to indicate that I would hang out with or collab with this person. So as I'm getting these tweets again after five years of staying silent on it, I just wanted an answer. Now in my last video, I said that I find this very strange because she said this in a previous video, but at the same time, Gabby has now admitted to Jesse Smiles that she went to a party where Curtis Lepore's friends would be in an area where I believe Curtis Lepore lived in or at least hung out in regularly with his friends such as Lele Pons. There was photos of them together on Instagram. And Gabby went to this party despite full well knowing that these people still associate with that scum. That's what I'm going to refer to him as for the next part of this video, the scum, because that's what he is. But also, so are the people that remained friends of him. They are also terrible people for remaining friends of him whilst knowing what he did. And that's why I'm confused by Gabby in this situation, because Curtis obviously turned up at that party and pulled Gabby aside to attempt to speak to her. But also, there was a FaceTime call, which I previously mentioned, between Gabby and Curtis. That's the first situation was a FaceTime call. The second situation was when we were at an event and he tried to take a selfie with me. And I was like, no, that's not happening. And then the event that I'm assuming you have to be talking about is when I was at um, 1600 Vine, and then he came there. I think I was at Lele's. And then he showed up, and I was like, oh, no. He tried to talk to me there and pull me aside yes. there. Yes. Yeah, but that's not, that's a completely different situation. That's not. That's literally months and months later. You were out of place w with his friends. He showed up and pulled you to the side. I said that. You hung out with Curtis's friend. Curtis was there, pulled you to the side. I said and you that. you said that as the way that it all went down. I also didn't hang out with like his friends. You I admitted to it. People who knew Curtis. I think I was at Lele. They all lived in the same building. Yes, and he showed up and pulled you to the and side. I am allowed to have friends. I'm allowed to collaborate. Like. I can't cut everybody out of my life. I didn't even know you spoke to him all these times. I'm finding out now, and honestly, I'm frankly disgusted. So I didn't even know all of this. I didn't know you took a- I'm talking about you're disgusted. I literally just told you about the first- Don't tell me what am I talking about. I just had a- Don't tell me that, because I just had a panic attack hearing you say that you heard him out. He said, do you mind if I tell you the story of that night? And I said, I mean, yeah, that's fine. Like, I've heard her side. You can tell me yours. So he told me the exact same story. Like literally I didn't even know story. that he told you the story of the night I was raped. I never knew that. Yeah, so he told me the story, and then I told right. him... Why would you listen to him? Lying. Why would you listen to him? Like, really? Because why would you, he like, even... I was getting ready to defend you. Like, I was but for like, what? Like, just don't... Just say, no, sir, thanks. Like, f you. Like, even though she's not my friend, I don't want to hear how you think no, you didn't rape her. Literally, I dead ass was waiting for him to laugh. Now, I find it amazing that Gabby was saying to Jesse, Oh, I'm allowed to have friends, I'm allowed- Nobody said you're not allowed to have friends, but I am allowed to criticize you for remaining friends with the friends of your friend's rapist. And I know that sounded a little bit complex to get out there, but that is the case of what was going on here. But also, I find it even more strange that you had a FaceTime call with the scum to hear him out. That is so 
so strange. And I also understand that Gabby said, oh, you know, his phone number wasn't saved on my phone. Okay, okay, but you could have just hung up the moment he said when you answered that it's him. But also, I don't know about other influencers, but personally, I don't answer my phone when it's an unknown number because, you know, a fan might have got my number, somebody bad might have got my phone number. So I really don't know how much I believe that statement. But even with the statement, it still is bad. Now, since this phone call came out, a lot of people were replying to Gabby's tweets, going into her comment section saying that she needs to respond to that situation because she was putting out videos in this series which weren't really relevant at all and relevant to the main thing that people were criticizing her for. And now since then, Gabby has finally responded, but also Jessie Smiles herself has responded. So what I'm going to be doing from this moment now is kind of interchanging between these two videos to kind of prove things right and prove things wrong and go over an overarching analysis of how truly terrible Gabby's video is. So this video is not one that was meant to be in the series, but so much has happened since I finished the series and everybody just wants me to address the Jesse Smiles leaked phone call. I decided instead of trying to fit more information into the videos I already edited to just kind of sit down and preface it with this because it doesn't really come into conversation until the end of part two. I actually predicted that Jessie was going to leak this phone call in part two of her chapter. So I actually did address the phone call in the series and that's why I didn't want to address it again beforehand because it was already addressed. I was able to predict what she was going to do because she's predictable. Well, to be honest with you, Gabby, the main reason I think this is predictable is mainly because you admitted to hearing out a rapist, a rapist that raped your friend. I, I think that's uh, probably why that's predictable, because you admitted that to the victim in a recorded phone call, which you knew was being recorded. I think that's why it was predictable because you admitted to doing a terrible thing. Now, obviously, as I said earlier, I do believe that Gabby does have the complete right to defend herself and respond to this phone call because Jesse put her out there. And yes, she needed to respond to it to give her take, maybe provide some context, stuff like that. Even though I don't really think there's any context that can save you from hearing out a rapist, but you know, there we go. But yeah, I think Gabby does have the right to respond to this, but at the same time, that doesn't mean that I have to pretend that this is a good response. I actually think that this response is absolute and utter complete garbage. I've seen a lot of people making the argument that, oh, this is just a situation from six years ago. Why does this even matter now? Well, the reason this matters now is because the thing is, YouTube drama is, uh, I don't know, Tana Mojo does something stupid and releases a terrible song. Like she does a diss track on somebody and oh my God, YouTube drama and Shane Walsh drops a documentary. That's YouTube drama. YouTube drama is not this topic. Trauma can last for your entire life. So if Jessie Smiles wants to speak about her trauma, she's more than welcome to. If Gabby Hanna wants to speak about her trauma, she's more than welcome to. But Jessie Smiles' trauma in this situation cannot be deflected by saying, oh, this was six years ago. If I felt betrayed by one of my friends and that hurt me for a very long time and that friend also continued to speak about me, yes, I would probably be inclined to respond publicly. But also, I do just have to ask the question of when did topics ever have expiry dates. If I want to talk about something from the 1700s, I'm gonna do so. If I want to talk about something from last week, I'm gonna do so. If I want to talk about anything, I'm gonna do so. And the same can go for any content creator out there. Now, I don't believe that's Gabby Hanna's argument. In fact, Gabby's argument is more that Jesse Smiles, according to Gabby, has never stopped speaking about her since 2015. She's been targeting and attacking me online since 2015. I've learned her patterns 
when I had to collect evidence for the lawsuit and it was just very obvious that this was, this was her next move. So yeah, before Jesse released this video, it seemed to me that Jesse had really only directly made one video about Gabby Hanna and her previous situation with Gabby. And to be honest with you, I personally don't have a problem with that. As I previously said, if somebody wants to speak about an experience they've had, I completely support that. Gabby responded to that, and then Gabby continued to speak about this and respond about this, despite saying in the past that she doesn't really want to be associated with drama, but then she goes and does articles, goes on drama alert, goes on multiple platforms to speak about Jesse Smiles, and then Gabby seemingly gets upset when Jesse Smiles releases a phone call as context to back her argument up from a video from 2019. I really don't think you can make the argument about Jesse speaking about Gabby when you have literally yourself, Gabby, spoken about Jesse probably more times than she has spoken about you, and Jesse acknowledges this. I've been targeting and attacking me online since 2015. I've learned her patterns when I had to collect evidence for the lawsuit, and it was just very obvious that this was, this was her next move. What Gabby doesn't understand is that every single time I have ever spoken about Gabby, whether I said her name in a video or I did not say her name in a video, it is because she did something that upset me. I have never in my life just gone around saying things about Gabby that never happened or making things up in the way that she's done to me. I just don't understand why she's making it seem like this is something I love to do when the only time I've ever addressed Gabby or gotten in fights with Gabby was because of things that she did. And I don't think she genuinely remembers it that way because when she's talking like this, I'm like, do you think I just do things out of the blue? Like I just wake up one morning and just want to pick a fight with you. Everything I've ever done is because you provoked it, whether in private or in public. I leaked those phone calls for a very specific reason, Gabby, and that's because you have been talking about me consistently for the last year publicly. After last summer, when you completely annihilated me online, when I was not even retaliating for 99% of it, I just learned to drop it. Like I didn't want to deal with you anymore. And then you make a video on my son's birthday where you're talking about all the people that have wronged you. And you say stories about me because you talk about the person you used to live with, which is me. And you're just saying all these insane allegations and everybody's going over to my Instagram page on my son's birthday and being like, oh, you're such a horrible mother. I feel horrible for your children. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And then fast forward to when you go on drama alert and you're talking to Keemstar, a man who has repeatedly not just told me I wasn't raped, he has literally joked about my rape and on multiple occasions just says, oh, it's very hard to believe because they were dating, which we weren't, but it shouldn't matter. This man has harassed me online for years. Gabby knows this. He is an infamous misogynist and rape apologist and overall horrible human being. And Gabby goes on his show to talk about me and Trisha Paytas to promote a song she wrote for Trisha Paytas that Trisha Paytas didn't even want her to write. And I ignored that. I just said, fuck it, whatever shitty thing to do, I'm going to keep it pushing. But when a BuzzFeed reporter just last month reaches out to me and says, hey, I had an interview with Gabby and she spoke a lot about you. Would you be willing to answer questions? And for you in that article to say, oh, I think it's a little chaotic that I haven't gotten apologies from people like Jesse Smiles. When you know that you were on a phone call with me a year ago threatening me that if I didn't do what you wanted, which includes apologizing to you publicly, you were gonna talk about our past publicly in an effort to hurt me. So when I hear you talk about me apologizing to you and how you feel it's a little chaotic that I haven't apologized to you, or when I read that you were never friends with Curtis and that you always sided with me, you just always believed me, and people just start rumors about you, about the Curtis situation every time you're releasing music, which is something you've said I've done for a long time now. And I'm promoting my project like crazy and you're gonna put my name in your fucking thumbnail bringing up a fucking dramatic lie a hate campaign that you fucking started five months you don't post but i'm posting a project and you have to say did gabby apologize yeah it pissed me off gabby because you're still lying i'm gonna move on now but i just find it ridiculous that she acts like she's some sort of genius for seeing into the future and knowing that i was gonna use this phone call so firstly i think it's a pretty level playing field here they've both responded to each other and spoken about each other but gabby clearly has done the more speaking so i don't think she really has the right to complain about Jesse speaking about her. I think that's extremely hypocritical to even make that argument because Gabby, you literally speak about YouTube drama <laughs> probably more than me. I think you've made more drama videos than I have in the last three months on your channel and that is saying something. So yeah, we're around a minute into this video when we've already made the establishment that Gabby Hanna is indeed being hypocritical. <gasps> what a shock.
But now we must move on to the topic of context because Gabby has now made the argument that there could be more context provided in the phone call that Jesse put on her Twitter account because Jesse put a 10 minute amount from a free hour phone call on to twitter.com. Jesse showed seven to 10 minutes, I believe, of a three over three hour phone call that she quite literally threatened me into having. Obviously, because it was an over three hour phone call, it was very heavily edited and uh, rearranged. I know that she said that it was only edited for brevity and that it didn't change the context, which I think would be really impossible to do out of a three hour phone call. And also I don't believe that she edited it for brevity because she left in a lot of her crying. I think that she edited it to evoke an emotional response because she's talking about something that is very emotional. Okay. I genuinely don't believe that these clips are out of context. I think that the necessary context was posted and that is in the fact that Gabby admitted to hearing out her rapist and going to a party in the past where her rapist's friends would be, the people that continually associate with a horrible human being were at this party and Gabby remained friends with them and even shouted at Jesse saying, I'm still allowed to have friends. I'm allowed to be friends of the friends of your rapist. I think the context is pretty like, damning to be honest with you. I think that alone said to me, oh shit, that's really not that good. The whole 10 minutes cover the topic of tweets, photos, FaceTime calls, meetups, etc, etc. So no, I, I don't believe that much more context would have really changed my mind. For me personally, I didn't need a three hour phone call. Yes, I have listened to the phone call now, and shock horror, it hasn't changed my mind. If you want to listen to it yourself, and it is available on the internet, you can go and do that. There are summary videos of it, but I listened to it, and my mind <laughs> wasn't changed. It was pretty similar. It was like, oh, so it's actually a little bit worse on Gabby's side. And also, the, the context was already there, as I said. The context, for example, of you admitting tweets you made mocking Jesse Smiles were about Jesse Smiles, despite in the past trying to lie and say that they weren't about Jesse Smiles. Why did you lie about defending Curtis? I said I never ditched my friend, Fermo Rapist, or publicly defended my best friend's rapist. This was the day the story broke. I hadn't seen the article yet. Whatever he tweeted, I genuinely have no idea what his tweet was. I responded with a current Vine meme, which was a Big Sean Lil Wayne song. Beware, beware, beware of a woman with a broken heart. I don't remember what he said. Obviously, it had nothing to do with the rape case. So that was that day before I ever saw it. The tweet is deleted because I was like, oh shit, I didn't understand the context of anything about this. One of my friends, like an, a guy friend, was falsely accused and um, it fucked up his life and all of a sudden it came out that he, it was false. And I fucking hated that bitch. So when it came out, like I said that thing, that thing about whatever the thousands, I don't remember, I, I have no idea what it actually said, but it's clear that I said something along those lines. First of all, all the ones that I saw, because I never went back and deleted anything, so mm. all the ones that I saw never showed that. They said, get popcorn or why can't be talking about buyers and then i saw the one that you're referring to which says somebody responded the actual tweet's not there so i don't know what it says but somebody said something about oh thousands of women da, 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 da. yeah and then i was like oh shit i remember this i tweeted this and deleted it like a minute later because at that point if you don't remember we had no idea who each other were i barely had a vine account i had a few thousand followers on there Right. I was literally a fan watching Vine gotcha. I said something stupid that I felt bad about. So yes, if the context of the 10 minute clip did anything, it proved that Gabby Hanna was lying in her previous video about Jesse Smiles, and it proved that yes, all of these things seemingly are all adding up, but also I do just want to speak about this phrase for a second. Because she left in a lot of her crying. I think that she edited it to evoke an emotional response. No, 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 no. She started crying because her previous good friend who she lived with admitted 
to hearing out her rapist. Not only is that a key bit of information, but I can understand why that's quite upsetting. Because Vi was going to hear out a friend of mine's rapist? I could understand if my friend heard that and thought, wow, you don't believe my story. That is extremely upsetting and extremely disgusting and just in general makes me think that people think that I'm a liar. That's what that does, Gabby, when you're a good friend of somebody who has gone through that pain and trauma. It really sounds to me like she's acting like Jesse is manipulating this situation, which is so messed up for so many reasons that I don't actually think that I need to explain. A YouTuber trying to evoke an emotional response to manipulate their audiences when they start crying at the beginning of an apology video. That is evoking emo an emotional response to get a reaction and maybe to manipulate your audience into believing you more. An emotional response to you saying and admitting to something terrible to a former, arguably best friend, that is not a manipulative tactic. That is not her evoking an emotional response. That was in the context of the clip and shows the realness and the pain that she was feeling. But obviously, your brain has been so rewired by the social media gods that you just have to see something as everything as like this manipulative tactic. No, Jessie was just extremely upset. I apologized to Jessie on Twitter in 2019 after her Gabby Hanna needs to be stopped video was posted. That was after she was tweeting that I was a shitty person and then liking tweets and replying to tweets that made it very obvious that it was about me. This is a theme with Gabby. She really cannot handle people subtweeting her or liking tweets that are not praising her. It was an issue she had with Brandon Calvillo. You call or you text me and then you're like, you know, like why, why the fuck did you like that tweet? And I was like, First, I didn't know how you did that so quickly. Like, that yeah, was the thing I, I didn't know. you said to me, you were just like, what's wrong with you that you're like stalking my likes on Twitter? Yeah. And I was like, we're both verified. From my point of view, you came at me very hard. I'm like, sure I did. You, you said, why the fuck did you like that? Like, you're a piece of shit. Like, you're a loser. I don't think I said you that. You said I'm a piece of shit. You, are, no, not, you, not off the bat. It was an issue she had with Oscar Wilde. I don't really know why you have a problem with me liking somebody. What verified account has to do with anything. You're, you're very obsessed with numbers. She cannot handle people liking anything that is not in her favor or saying anything about her, even if you don't say her name. And you're going to see a common theme of that because the majority of what Gabby Hanna has on me that she's going to show in her series are subtweets or places in videos where I was mentioning someone and I don't even say a name and she either assumes it's about her or even if it was about her, like I had a story time channel. It's just so much nonsense. Now this is a topic that I've spoken about involving Gabby Hanna quite a lot on this channel where Gabby Hanna receives the slightest bit of criticism, the, the tiny, tiny, tiniest little ounce of criticism. Somebody possibly being absolutely lovely and nice and kind and lovely and just uh, just saying, hey, you could improve. No, no, no. You gotta criticize Gabby Hanna. And that's every single time she ever gets criticized. She is somebody that takes any form of criticism, even if it's not somebody making the criticism and merely liking a post of criticism of Gabby and gets so vehemently offended that she has to go on Twitter tirades and demand public apologies or even attack people who she sent out her own book to to criticize and then she gets mad at them for criticizing the book and calls them a bitch. Hey Rachel, instead of hopping in my DMs trying to bully and gaslight me from your own abuse, you could just apologize. I know that if I did anything like this, I would be called manipulative, sociopathic, narcissistic, attention hungry, money hungry, but that is what you are. What you did was bully and harass me for months. And then when you got called out of it, got super defensive. Like you literally just ran away and blocked me instead of looking at your own criticism. You can't take criticism towards yourself at all. I've still never blocked you after all of the harassment. You can't stand even the ounce tiniest ounce of criticism. You're a fucking monster. You're a bitch. And yes, I'm speaking about the Rachel Oates situation again, in which Rachel Oates made a wonderful video criticizing Gabby Hanna's poetry, where she was actually sent the book and Gabby said, hey, read this book and put a review on your channel. And Rachel Oates fairly criticized it. Now, Gabby may make the argument of, oh, well, she made a book mocking my book, a, a poetry book mocking my poetry book. It's the worst thing in the world. Yeah, a poetry book, which was 
very, very just tame and nice and just purely made for a joke, but also a poetry book where the proceeds went to charity. And the reason I'm speaking about this situation again is because it's a good summary of Gabby Hanna's ego, her fragile ego. She is somebody that cannot take criticism, she is somebody that is terrible with accepting any form of advice, but she is also somebody, one of the, one of my worst, favourite worst type of people, the people who apologise for something and think, oh, now I've apologised, they surely must have to accept my apology and never criticise me again. No, to the, not just Gabby, but to the people that do that, please, for the love of God, just stop. If somebody is wronged by you and you apologize, they don't need to accept your apology. If you do something terrible, horrible, they still have the right to criticize you. Yes, you apologized. Wonderful. But that doesn't avoid things. It, it, it really, that, especially given what you actually did and given all the things you've done, because my problem with Gabby is so many situations. The fact that I personally believe that she was only using me to be friends with me, so I'd make videos defending her and she got mad at me for not defending her. That was something which upset me, and it's another reason to why I was very, very upset in the last few months seeing her actions, you know? And I don't think one apology can change a million situations. And I think this fragile ego with Gabby Hanna only gets proven further with sick, sick statements like this. I do press, I am allowed to talk about my life. This is something that has become a huge part of my story, much to my dismay. But it's not right for you to be able to say whatever you want, and then I can't be asked about it, I can't respond about it, I can't defend myself, I can't share my side of the story. I was asked about her because since 2015, Jessie has made it her mission to align me with her now, I've seen a lot of people try to make this argument that Jesse Smiles is doing all of this for attention and doing this all for drama. And the fact that Gabby has said that she is trying to align her with her rape it. You're not that important. See, there's a thing which I think a lot of people who haven't personally been affected by these situations think is that you can't have trauma years later. You can't be affected by something years later because in their mind, that doesn't make sense. But as I said earlier, trauma can last for a lifetime. Somebody may want to speak about something which has affected them so many times and that's okay. Gabby, you have branded your series around it being an art piece to represent your trauma, but then you get upset at somebody for speaking about their trauma whilst you speak over their trauma? That's very confusing to me personally for somebody who is somebody who clearly wants to put off this persona like they're caring and that they want people to express themselves and express the hurt inside them. Because to be honest with you, if you want Want to make this series and speak about the times you've been upset, that is perfectly fine. I'm still going to criticize it. But at the same time, I don't think you can then get mad at somebody for speaking about their trauma. And then I can't be asked about it. I can't respond about it. I can't defend myself. I can't share my side of the story. I think there's this one big thing that we all need to realize is that curators always say, I'm not allowed to speak about this. I can't. You can speak about this. You have millions of followers. You have literally uploaded over four videos speaking about this situation, I'm pretty sure, or been on over four videos about this situation. Nobody has censored you. Nobody is stopping you. People are just disagreeing with you. There is a difference between I'm not allowed to do something and I'm getting criticized for doing that thing. The difference is, is you can still upload your video and talk about these things, but you are getting repercussions for your actions. People are angry and criticizing you, but those people aren't stopping you from uploading those videos. Jessie Smiles isn't a dictator at Google HQ. She doesn't dictate what you put on your channel, and I'm pretty sure she probably didn't even want to upload that video, but because you, 
uploaded your video, which YouTube gave you permission to do, she responded. Do you expect her to not respond? And if you genuinely do, I am baffled. You can speak about these things, and you have. Please stop pretending that somebody is censoring you. You don't see the hundreds of tweets that she mass unliked. You don't see the tweet and delete. First of all, the tweet that you're putting up, everybody's seen it. Furthermore, mass unlike tweets? How does someone even do that? I'm not joking. How do you mass unlike tweets? I'm so confused. I've never done that in my life. Full disclosure, that did not happen. You don't see the voice messages and the text that she sends me threatening me, crossing my boundaries that I'm setting firmly and telling me that if I don't do what she wants that she's going to put out another video with more evidence. And the evidence being tweets that I deleted in 2014. I mean, anybody that can read saw on the screen I was not threatening Gabby. Why do you put up text and then say something completely different? What if someone's not able to look at the screen? What if they're doing laundry? And now this part is genuinely fascinating to me and can just be argued as another Gabby Hanna lie because when you look at these texts in particular, which to me personally, I, I think are the worst ones Gabby has because, I mean, why would she not show the worst ones she has to make her argument stronger? These texts are basically Jesse being pretty nice. The first text says that she isn't in a good headspace and she's not trying to put pressure here, but she was basically saying that she doesn't want to sit down and make a video about Gabby, and in fact, she thinks that sitting down with her would be the best resolution to, to, to come to some form of resolve in this situation, which to me is like, wow, I mean, that's really nice, and the fact she's put that on the screen to show that this is some manipulative, horrible person, it's just kind of funny to me. And then the second text is actually her politely asking if she would like to see the screenshots before she puts it in the video, because I imagine Gabby turned down that offer, or it just didn't come to fruition. And again, that's very polite. She's made an expose video and is asking, hey, do you want to go through it before I post it? Which to me, again, is her being kind. Now, the third text is her saying that she'll stop texting her and how she feels that the video is the only way to stop this. The fourth text is asking if she wants to chat. And the fifth shot is about the screenshots. And the sixth, once again, is about pressure and saying she is worried about people accusing her of false things. To me personally, I don't see any manipulation. I don't see any terrible acts here. Okay, maybe Gabby said that she didn't want to speak about this situation, but at the same time, they both have videos about it, there are people being bombarded in this situation, I think it would be healthy to talk about it, and if Gabby didn't want to talk about it, fair enough. Jessie did say that's fair enough, and she'll just go and make her own response video, which I personally think is completely and utterly fair. I don't think that these screenshots really are career-ending. I've seen a few people be like, oh my god, Jessie Smiles has been exposed. Exposed for what? Being nice? Now, maybe in the mind of Gabby Hanna, I can understand that maybe she did at the time think that Jessie was trying to ruin her career, which I don't agree with whatsoever, but I'm just trying to think from her perspective here. But then Jessie tried to resolve it with her and sit down with her, which Gabby has actually done in the past with Trisha Paytas, who I would argue has had way more beef with Gabby Hanna. So I'm confused to why she just wouldn't sit down with Jesse smiles, so I can't get mad at Jesse for making these videos, not like I ever would, but at the same time, this only really boosts Jesse's points. She moved on to say that I hung out with her and his friends, which didn't happen. She lied in saying that he pulled me aside and told me and that we talked in person. He didn't call you. You hung out with Curtis's friends. Curtis was there. This is what you told me. He pulled you to the side and he told you that. He told you, I'm so sorry I was mean to you. I can't believe what Jesse did to you. Trying to get on your side. That, that part's true, but it happened in person. Absolutely did not happen. And I know that didn't happen. It was a FaceTime call. And I know for a fact it was a FaceTime call because he recorded it and blackmailed me with it. Now, this is one time where I will fully admit that maybe the clips that Jesse Smiles posted could have been edited a little bit better. But at the same time, I also think those clips still provided Gabby Hanna admitting that she had out her friends 
rapist, but also she admitted to going to a party with friends of that rapist where he would obviously be. Those clips provided the context and it is more on me in my previous video for thinking that that clip actually meant that the conversation she had with the horrible scum that he is was at the party, when in reality, the call was on a FaceTime call. Don't tell me that, because I just had a panic attack hearing you say that you heard him out. He said, do you mind if I tell you the story of that night? And I said, I mean, yeah, that's fine. Like, I've heard her side. You can tell me yours. So he told me the exact same story. Like, I didn't even know that he told you the story of- And I guess this is where Gabby thinks the context thing should come in this situation with the Twitter videos. And yeah, maybe the Jesse clips should have been edited in a longer way. I can see why that argument would have been made. But my argument back to that is, for one, all of the things that were provided in that clip, as I just said, were admitted to. They just happened in different situations. She still went to the party, and in my opinion, it actually makes it worse that her conversation with was on a FaceTime call. It wasn't in person. In person, I could actually maybe, maybe understand some defense for it being like, oh, well, you don't know how it is being pulled aside by some random scary man. You couldn't get away from it. I can, I can actually get that. But with a FaceTime call, you could have just not answered or answered and said, hey, will you stop calling me? You are a terrible person. Rather than having an actual call, which you have ad admitted to answering and listening to his words about what he did to your friend at the time. That makes it worse, in my opinion. This context is actually even worse. So you arguing about context has only made this situation even worse because you had a consensual FaceTime call. He didn't just pull you aside, which he actually did do at a party. They just didn't speak about that situation then, despite being at the party. You know, I've said it a million times at this point. But yes, this, in my opinion, makes it even worse. And then I answered it because I was still just, I was like nobody. So like if somebody's FaceTiming me, I'm like, oh, like I must know you. So I answered it and it was him. And he said, I got your number from this person who I don't want to say right now because like that is the last person that wants to be involved in this shit. So I answered the call and then it was such a short phone call where he said, um, I just wanted to call you to apologize. And it clearly wasn't the actual intention of the phone call. He said, I wanted to call to you to apologize for being rude to you in the past in public events. And I genuinely never thought that he was rude to me. Like I've never spoken to him. He was, I was like, what are you talking about? He said, um, you know, just like giving you dirty looks, like not being like cool to you. And I was like, I don't, it doesn't matter. And he was like, yeah, like I heard that you guys had a falling out. Um, so I figured it'd be a good time. Like, sorry. It's just like, obviously, like, I don't want to be close to people who are close to her. So I said, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Why would you? So then he said, do you mind if I tell you the story of that night? And I said, I mean, yeah, that's fine. Like I've heard her side. You can tell me yours. So he told me the exact same story. Like, literally, your stories match up. I didn't even know that he told you the story of the night I was raped. I never knew that. Yeah, so he told me the story, and then I told him, well, she's why not lying. Why would you listen to him? Why would you listen to him? Because, like, honestly, Jesse, I was, he, like, he... I was getting ready to defend you. Like, I was literally about to say, oh, actually, that's not what happened. To say, no, sir, thanks. Like, fuck you. Like, even though she's not my friend, I don't want to hear No, you. Jesse, oh, I was literally, I deadass was waiting for him to lie. And like when I was Who waiting, cares? because I wanted Jesse, I wanted to fight for you to him, like dead no, ass. Like literally, fuck him. I agree, fuck him. I agree, but like when he said that, I literally wanted to catch him in his lie. So then he told me his story. He told me his story, and I told him, "Well, Curtis, that is literally the story that Jesse tells." And at the end of the day, she was asleep. Like, that is what I said to him. And then he was like, well, yeah. Oh, excuse me, I, I need to call you back. I'm sorry. Okay. I'll call you back. That's fine. Okay, bye. I mean, it does just make it so unbelievably worse realizing that it was on a consensual FaceTime call. But also, in regards to my actual criticism of how the Twitter clips are edited, you can hear Jesse say, why didn't you hang up? So, 
The FaceTime call context is there, but it makes it sound even worse in long form. And even after this, even after the lies, the deception, the manipulation, the nothing points, Jesse then catches Gabby out in another lie. And then after that, I think I only saw him like two or three times. One was at an event in Hollywood. That's where he was like, hey, Gabby Show, can I get a pic? And took those pictures. And then afterwards, the same night, everybody from the event went to the diner across the street. And then he was taking pictures of Zane and I, like implying that he was there with us. Can we rewind to a year ago to what you said that story was? In fact, one time I was at an event, an influencer event, and he happened to be there and he tried to take a Snapchat selfie with me. And I told him to delete it right now because I did not want to be associated with him. I have zero association with Curtis Lepore. I'm so exhausted. So now it wasn't just a picture that you took with someone who you didn't even know was taking the picture. And then as soon as you realized it was Curtis, you asked him to delete it. The story is that you guys all went to dinner afterwards and he sat across from you in a booth and you're mad that he posted about it. You should be mad that you put yourself in that situation. Nobody can make you look bad by showing something that you're doing unless the thing that you're doing is bad. I don't remember if we had any other exchanges. I would have never collabed with Curtis, even if I fucking wanted to. Like how dumb would I have to be to collab with Curtis considering there were already rumors out there that Jesse was telling people that I did her to collab with her rapist. Yeah, but never explicitly said Gabby is a rape apologist. Gabby collabed with my rapist. So I, this isn't even really an attack on Gabby. This is just Gabby being smart and saying and what you're allowing. There's some shit that pops up. Like after I did my first video, the responding to Jesse, and I talked about specific tweets. Those were all the tweets I could possibly find. And then I saw more tweets afterwards, and my fucking jaw dropped. Dude, I've been living in constant fear that a lie that I don't even know I'm telling is gonna catch up with me because I don't fucking remember it. Because I do impulsive shit and then I forget about it. I have memory issues, dude. And to be honest with you, I think that is a perfect summary of who Gabby Hanna truly is. She is such an ego-driven person that she is so willing to say absolutely anything just to get a one-up on one random person on the internet who she may have have a kerfuffle with. It could be me, it could be your nana, it could be your granddad. No matter what, Gabby Hanna will say anything just to get the one up on somebody, even if she's proven wrong the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day, she can just say, oh, but at one time I disproved you and, you know, it just gets washed away in all of the complete and utter bollocks that Gabby Hanna has spouted over the last few years. Now, there isn't, in my opinion, much more that I can really add to this situation and the response videos, but I do want to say it clearly just shows that Gabby is just willing to say anything. She is so unbelievably desperate to try and I guess like denounce somebody's trauma with some of the things she said earlier about how Jesse is allegedly trying to I guess attach Gabby and her rapist together in this it's it's so disgusting to me especially given the fact that Gabby as I said earlier has marketed this series around her trauma which is just her speaking over other people's trauma I don't doubt in this series, Gabby has made some good points here and there. I'm not going to say that she was wrong in every single thing, and I'm not going to say that Gabby Hanna hasn't been mistreated in the YouTube community. There are times where I have seen Gabby in situations, and I have thought, wow, that's just so stupid and isn't even an issue. Like, Gabby isn't in the wrong there. It's just some stupid stuff on the internet. But in this situation, as I said earlier, this isn't drama. This is a very serious situation and I think it's very upsetting that some people will speak over Jessie Smiles in saying that she can't speak about her trauma yet at the same time celebrates a series made by Gabby Hanna about her trauma. It's so unbelievably hypocritical to me and I think that's what these response videos are from Gabby Hanna towards Jessie Smiles. Complete and utter hypocrisy. <laughs> All right, you big bastards, I realize that the last 50 minutes of this video has been extremely stressful, so uh, let's have a little intermission before we go into the final parts of this video, and uh, yeah, here's uh, a video of my dog. <laughs> You're so stupid.
Did you just walk? Okay, I think that's enough. Now, I think that is the ending to this segment about the Jesse Smiles and Gabby Hanna situation in this series. And now I want to move on to the promised second section of this video. And of course, that is about my favourite thing in the world. My most lovely and wonderful thing in the entire universe, which is tea channels and commentary channels. Now, if you don't really know what a tea channel is or even a commentary channel, well, guess what, people? You're watching one right now. Whether you dub me as a tea channel or a commentary channel, I think there's one fact that we can all agree on is that I am undoubtedly a virgin and a commentary channel. I think I'm a commentary channel, but basically a tea channel and a commentary channel is where a YouTuber takes a specific topic, any topic, doesn't have to be drama, and they speak about that thing on YouTube and give their critical analysis on it. Now with tea channels, it's more, oh, well, you know, this thing happened and that happened, but with commentary channels, they kind of like to put their comedic spin or personality or something like that on it. I think tea channels just kind of like to deliver the news and to be honest, of you, great, wonderful. I don't actually have a problem with them. But recently, there has been a lot of discussions between T channels and commentary channels around the situation involving Gabby Hanna and her particular opinion on T channels. Gabby recently has come out heavily criticizing a lot of T channels out there, blaming the T channels pretty much for her complete and utter demise in terms of the YouTube community. And to be honest with you, in some situations, I have admitted in this video to seeing a T channel speak, or even a commentary channel, speak about Gabby Hanna, and I have thought to myself, Jesus Christ, do you not have a girlfriend or a boyfriend? Because, good God, some of the things spoken about by our genre is ridiculous sometimes, not just with Gabby, with a whole bunch of of topics. It can get quite ridiculous. And even myself, I have been a little bit guilty sometimes of maybe taking something and making it a bigger deal out of it, really bigger deal than it needs to actually be. And I think with Gabby, in certain situations, it has most definitely been that. But I'm not turning into a Gabby Hanna defender. Because Gabby, you can't really blame everybody else for the things you yourself have done. And that's something I've noticed with Gabby, not just with this tea channel argument, because I'm not gonna go into the specific situation spoken about for obvious reasons, and if you don't know the reasons, I'm not going to say them, but I'm not going to, I'm just gonna say that Gabby, you can't blame tea channels for every single thing that you have done on the internet. And that leads us on to a situation I was personally involved in, involving Kenza Cosmetics. To DM people who said that they have a problem with it, trying to get personal information, trying to talk to the company, but at this point there's already all these other videos and tweets popping up that Gabby Hanna scammed her fans. I was not the only person to promote that company and that's how I know that you guys don't actually care about the problem, you care about me. You want me to be the problem. That's something that like I've never been able to express because it's like, look how defensive she is. Dude, yeah, I'm defensive because people are always attacking me in a very unfair and chaotic way. If you guys actually cared about accountability, and I'm talking to drama channels again, and Angelica Oles, of course, like she's she literally starts every story when it comes to me. I really have like a deep disdain for her, and I'll be very honest about that. I think that she has done some really terrible things for the sake of money, including pinpoint me and target me in that way. And try Trying to say that she's doing it in an unbiased way. Dude, you literally put up a video of me. This is a brand deal that so many influencers were doing. Gabby Hanna is a scammer. Before I even have a chance to respond, you're calling me a scammer. I would have loved to have had the opportunity to address that situation properly. Now, if you're not in the grips of the YouTube masterminds and social media gods such as Jack Dorsey and Mark Zuckerberg, you may not know about the Kenza Cosmetics scandal. Now, this scandal, as Gabby just spoke about, was a situation where Gabby was basically accused of scamming her fans, and it was a big old kerfuffle, and I was actually involved where I defended Gabby, had interviewed Gabby, and even critiqued Gabby, and regardless Regardless of what you thought about that situation, I think we can all agree that that previous clip was uh, a little bit silly because Gabby was in the wrong in that situation, and I think she knows that, yet she blames 
a tea channel that merely covered it. Which is pretty ridiculous when you consider the fact that on the 4th of December 2018, a video was uploaded about the Cleanser Cosmetics scandal, and on the 19th of December, Angelica Oles, the person in question from Gabby here, uploaded their first video about that situation with Gabby in the title, but also the first video that I mentioned on the 4th of December, didn't even have Gabby's name in the video, it just mentioned her in the video. Because the fact is, is that people were also blaming other creators like Tana Mojo in that situation. It wasn't just a Gabby Hanna fest, but it just so happened that Gabby Hanna, as usual, was one of the worst people in that situation because of how she handled it. It was terrible. In hindsight, if you get in YouTube drama and you go to a, a, a random commentary channel 200, with 200k subs like myself and do an interview on their channel rather than your own, that probably looks a little bit sus because all of your audience won't see that and won't see this scandal that you're involved in. And also there are plenty of other videos about this situation before Angelica Rose even uploaded her video. Again, it does just seem to me that this is another situation where Gabby Hanna's ego was damaged really badly so she just has to go and blame a load of random channels because they simply covered the fact that she did something wrong. This is is a recurring pattern with Gabby Hanna. Now, don't get me wrong, I have my critiques of commentary channels. I may have even had some critiques of Angelica Rolls in the past, and in fact, I have discussed tea channels with Gabby Hanna when I was friends. But the fact of the matter is that I don't think Angelica Rolls had any malicious intent there. I know Angelica. I know she certainly didn't. I know that she was just doing her job as a tea channel to simply cover that story. Gabby, the Kenza Cosmetics situation was curated by you. It wasn't curated by Angelica Oles. This is no one's fault but your own. And this is one of the main criticisms of Gabby Hanna is the fact that she has to blame everyone for all of the things she's done. She has to say, oh, I wonder why nobody is friends with me anymore. It can't be me. It must be everyone else. Yeah, the 999 people against the one, they're all in the wrong. It just makes no sense. And that does move us on to the other situation which Gabby responded to in this series involving a production called Escape the Night. There's a story I want to tell. The reason I'm doing this is because so much stuff has popped up at once and I never, again, like I never got to adequately just like defend myself. And I don't want this to be a thing that people think they can just do. Come out and tell some like story about me then everybody makes fun of me and like doesn't listen. I, always apologize if I do something wrong, if I react in a way that's embarrassing, always I apologize, but I never get an apology for what they did. And I'm so sick of this narrative that the first person to talk shit about it publicly is the person who just like wins and you just have to apologize to that person and that's it. Because this situation was really fucked up and I've always kept it between us because I feel like professional and personal relationships should not be public, period. And that's why I've never spoken up about shit. So because this is something that has been said behind the scenes by people I thought were friends for years and I was made a mockery of by people I thought were friends for years and then they went on publicly to throw me under the bus after pretending to be my friend for years and as soon as it was like an opportunistic moment just be like she was a nightmare to work with. Season four, Gabby, I had issues with her. I also had issues with her on season two. I don't think I've ever said her name publicly, but it's not really news to anyone. She was miserable to work with for the most part. There were good moments. If she was great on camera, which she was, and she was very entertaining, I forget about all that shit. And then season four, she was a nightmare. I'm not gonna expand upon that because I don't really care anymore. It was just hard. There were a lot of diva antics. There was a lot of yelling, a lot of screaming, a lot of unprofessional behavior. It was miserable, but it turned out entertaining on the show. So I can't really hold that against her. So I want to talk about Daniel Prada and in relation I have to talk about Joey because Joey also talks shit about me publicly. Oh, there was one in season four too. Really? Sure. Yeah, that was <sighs> season four was my least favorite to film by far. Why? Just because Drama. of this one person on the cast who just made it hell. Really? Is it true that there was drama on the set of season four? Yeah, absolutely. 
<laughs> Once again, this is another case of Gabby Hanna thinking, oh, I apologize. Oh, I was sorry. Oh, this was years ago. Oh, we used to be friends. You can't say these things about me because we used to be friends. That's not how it works. I'm sorry. But there isn't like some magical binding contract which means that, oh, you can't speak about or criticize anybody that you used to be friends with. Because most cases, when you used to be friends with somebody, not all, but a lot of cases, you usually fall out over a reason. And you can speak about that reason because maybe you got trauma from that reason or maybe you just want to speak about it and you are a human being, so you're going to do so. Just like you have done in this 5,000 part series, Gabby. I'm sorry, I don't think you're somebody to say these things. You act like you've never spoken about drama before when your entire channel for the last two years has been about drama. And that's fine, but don't act like some higher up being. And Joey Christopher actually came out with this video where he basically just exposed Gabby even further. So I'm gonna go over some of the points that she made in her video that are just completely false and give you guys the receipts to back that up. But before we get into those points, I do wanna let you guys know that Gabby and I were close friends. So when she acts like the victim and is wondering why all these people in her life who claim to be her friends are no longer her friends, you do things, Gabby, to make people not be your friends. What you did to me on Escape the Night is the reason we are no longer friends and the reason why I talked badly about you being on Escape the Night. Just because we were friends before that doesn't contractually make me obligated to never say anything bad about you or never not be your friend because we were friends in the past. You did this. You ended our friendship, not me. The way that you acted on set of Escape the Night is why we are no longer friends. And if you want an example of what a friend is like on set of a production of your friend, take some advice from Colleen, who literally gave birth months before, showed up on set, was breastfeeding, went home after hours on set to her baby waking up and then having to be a mom and then coming to set the next day and doing it all over again. And the crazy thing is, Colleen was my number one support system. Being on set of a production that's millions of dollars and having all this pressure is a lot. But Colleen didn't complain once and she was my number one supporter, making me feel good about things and helping me de-stress and telling me that everything was gonna be okay. Meanwhile, you, who's also my friend, is making life on set a living hell by being disrespectful and rude and mean and foul to not only cast, but crew. Screaming at the director, demanding things, and calling a production assistant a dumb cunt is not how you act on set of one of your friends, not even just your friend, any set in general. That's not how you act, regardless of your mental health issues. This is not how you act. And he's definitely not wrong, and he's basically said everything that I've said in this video of where Gabby seems to have this imaginary weird thought that if you're friends with somebody and you're no longer friends with them, you can never speak about them again. It's, it's truly mind-baffling, but to me, I think it again is this ego thing of where Gabby just simply cannot handle when somebody criticizes her or speaks merely the little bit negative about her. And I understand a lot of you may be confused to what the actual situation here was. So basically, in a little short summary, there was a production for a movie slash show called Escape the Night, and it involved all the YouTubers that I have spoken about here, which are Joey and Gabby. And there have been, in the last few years, a lot of stories about how absolutely terrible Gabby Hanna was on set. And in this video, Gabby basically hit back at that, and then Joey hit back at that, and then Gabby just, I, I, I guess, went on a break because she was completely and utterly exposed. And I was hearing that he was like playing out voice notes of me being upset that there wasn't like the proper food on set. And I played me their own audio messages of Gabby cursing people out because they don't have the right food or whatever the case is. Like, it's you, Gabby. Think about it. Think of all the people you screwed over. The people that you fucked up their set because of your eating and training schedule. Things weren't catered to you. You're fucking piece of shit. She causes chaos on sets because they don't have her healthy snacks and she has to be at a gym at 10 a.m. because that's her routine. 
you're a psychopath. And that's like humiliating, dude, to like, it's one thing to do that like privately behind my back. Like, I know that like Daniel and Joey are two of the biggest shit talkers on the planet. All YouTubers are, including me, I was too. And that's why I don't want, I don't belong in that community. Like I surround myself with like, <sighs> To know that like my mental health and something that I was struggling with so much and I was so forthcoming about. And like, dude, I was humiliated in that situation too. By day three or four, I forget how many days I lasted there. That was day three or four of literally absolute worst case scenario what it could have been for me. I showed up to set and like one of the things they promised was like, we promise we'll get you a really comfortable outfit. They were bragging that they were like spent all this money on this like beautiful silk and I'm like, please just make sure I'm warm. I don't want to be in heels again. Like, dude, this is like literally playing physical sports outside in costumes. Like it's the most confusing fucking situation. <laughs> and like, I don't want to be in heels and tights and shit again this year. I want to be warm and I want to be able to like move because we sit in these outfits for literally like the work hours on that set were nuts. I show up on set, literally the exact same problem where I literally couldn't move my arms and I was feeling really restricted and like claustrophobic in it. I was wearing literally nothing. It was like freezing winds. Once again, I'm in heels playing fucking sports outside in heels. Like all the shit that I was promised wasn't going to happen essentially. And then uh, the other fucking thing was <laughs> They asked me like, are you allergic to any metals when I was getting this costume? And I was like, I'm highly allergic to pretty much all metal except for like sterling silver, white gold. First day right off the bat, I'm wearing all of this fake huge chunky jewelry that did break me out. Now when you first listened to this, I, I, I did think, okay, yeah, I mean, that's quite bad. But then you get the context, which is kind of ironic because of the amount of times Gabby has complained about context, of where she didn't even fill out the health forms. Then you go into your eating disorder and the whole food situation. Every single person is sent a form days before we start filming to get people's medical information and their allergies and any food restrictions. Gabby didn't fill this out until the day we were on set. Miss Gabby, yes. can we do a little BTS? Of course. Moments? How is of course, she? Darling. Look at, she's got her yellow hair on. We're doing that. She's practicing her script. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to fill this out beforehand so we can get everything prepared and make sure that we have your, your dietary restrictions accounted for. So I don't understand how you expect things to be done for you when you don't do the work yourself. And I also would like to just take a minute to defend Daniel who literally went above and beyond for not only you but everybody else on set. He had a million things going on and yet he still managed to have the time to go to Whole Foods and get you your three healthy meals that were so specific of like exactly what you needed and yet you still didn't even eat them. You literally just left them out to rot. I mean, I really just don't understand how anybody could think about complaining about the things that you didn't have on set when you were literally clearly given a form which you wrote out on the day of being on set. I know in 2021, Amazon on the day exists, but back then in what, 2015, 2016, I don't think it was a thing. And you literally have people actually going out and getting the food that you want and also, I just find it bizarre that you would even complain about this where there's video evidence of you signing this form on the day of being on set. They can't just magic things out of their ass. That's not how it works. Like, Gabby, please. I, I really do just think you are so desperate to get one point, and even then, it's still not working. These creators, they don't like Gabby. They've publicly spoken negatively about Gabby, so she now is just going around spreading misinformation, lies, and manipulation in order to gain a one-up on them because her career has completely and utterly fallen off. And it's honestly disgraceful to me and awful to me, but realistically, I'm not shocked. I, I'm not shocked whatsoever because it's Gabby Hanna. What did you expect?
And this is the final part of the video of where I go over the reception to this video and I'm going to keep it nice, short and sweet because I'm pretty sure that every curator that was friends with Gabby Hanna has denounced her, has come out and said, yes, these things were true. And I am another friend, but former friend of Gabby, that has denounced her. I stayed away from making videos on Gabby, which I think was a nice thing of me, but no. No, it's it's bad. It's it's really bad. The reception is she's lost over a hundred thousand subs. She's been cut off by so many curators, so many friends, and yet we're meant to believe that we, all of us, are the toxic ones. She most definitely is not. As I said earlier, in any situation of where everybody distances themselves from you, there's usually a case in point of where you are the problem. You are the toxic person. Gabby, I honestly implore you to stop this series and just touch some grass, go outside, and just enjoy life, and maybe your, 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 the social media gods will let go of you, and you can just let all of this go, and become a better person, because Gabby, oh my lord, this series is not good for you, even if you think it is, I just can't see why, you have this weird delusional thought that this is some form of art piece, it's, if it's an art piece, it's something drawn in a fucking nursery, because it looks like shit. To conclude this video, I don't doubt in some parts of this video, Gabby has made some decent points here and there, particularly with her Trisha Paytas videos, but to be honest with you, I'm not really shocked, because at the end of the day, that involves Trisha Paytas, who has been in drama with every other single YouTuber. So Gabby, what I suggest is instead of working on this painfully terrible series, just please go do something better. Your music isn't bad in my opinion, and I think you could probably make some good stuff. Maybe just focus on that. But yeah, that is the end of this very long video. Not all my videos will be this long because I just wanted to come back and do an overarching analysis on this series. So thank you for watching. Please like this video because I'm understanding that Gabby Hanna Stans will probably dislike this video. So please get it to 30,000 likes. Thank you so much for coming along and please subscribe and get me to a bloody million subscribers because I would absolutely love that. My Twitter is iNabba69 and my Instagram is iNabba. Thank you so much for coming along to this video, you beautiful people, and I'll see you in the next video.